All right, we now welcome on to Inside TBT, a couple of Syracuse alumni and members of Bayheim's Army, Demetrius Nichols and Eric Devendorf. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Or us. Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah we're, guys. we're excited to have you. You know, this, this obviously is going to look and sound a little different having multiple guests. We might have one more surprise entrance, maybe, but... Let's get to it. First question, we're curious, are you guys in TBT shape? Great, you can go first. Oh, don't worry about me, I stay in shape. I, I'm gonna make sure I'm doing something even if I'm not playing ball. It's just kind of like a, like a lifestyle thing, you know what I mean? I, got, I gotta get my workout in every day. And um, you know, just for guys who really want it, who are gonna make it happen, they are gonna find a way to work out, they are gonna find a gym, they are gonna get an outside room, so I'm ready to go. Yeah, and uh, to piggyback what Eric said, I'm in shape. Do you know? Do this whole coronavirus thing. I have a gym downstairs that I use every, basically every day, and uh, I have a court outside, and I try to shoot every day, and I try to run every day. So, kind of what Eric was saying, this is a lifestyle for us. You know, we we usually train together all summer, every summer, and uh, you know that's what we try to do is you know always be ready for anything. So when you stay ready, you never have to get ready. We got uh, Dante Green ready to join right now. Should I let him in? Oh, no. Nah, don't even let that man in. <laughs> All nah, right, I'll let him in. If he's doing something crazy, maybe we'll start over and re-record, but I'll let him <laughs> in. You got to ask him that question you asked us. All right, we will. Because you guys want to know that. That's a fact. I want to know that. You, why don't you guys ask him? You ask him. No. Sure, I'll ask him. What's, What's happening? up, man? What's going on? My bad. Hey, you're good. Hey, dang, you on the you, you, you on the I'm out running errands, man, for the family. I forgot that fast, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Man, man. So you What's you good, jumped though? in uh you jumped in mid interview, but I'm Andrew. That's Joey, my co host. You're what's uh, up, baby? What's up, Joey? Drew, what's, what's up? up? So we started off by asking your guys, and we want to know from you too. Are you in game shape? Are you ready for the TBT? To be honest, I think I'm in some pretty good shape. Um, I've been uh, I picked up biking uh, since the, the the quarantine started, and uh, you know I've been doing about eighty to eighty five miles a week on my bike. Uh, so um, yeah, you know my legs feel. Man, they're, they're stronger than they've been in the last past couple of years, I will say that. So I haven't really tested it as far as playing like five on five, but like individual workouts, man, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty good. So I haven't been up and down the court yet, but uh, I, think, I, I think I should be pretty good. Are you guys uh, under the assumption that the group of dudes that you guys kind of put together, um, it's going to be like riding a bike where you guys, whether it's from chemistry or just the fact that you guys are all hoopers, that you're not worried about the fact that you could, might maybe not have had um, that pickup or up and down game uh, type of type of stuff yet. Uh, um, it's definitely gonna take time. Um, obviously, we know everybody, each other, but it's gonna take time. And uh, once we get into a rhythm, I think hopefully things start to cl click sooner than later. Because obviously, if you win, you lose. If you lose, you go home. So. The sooner the better we get some type of connection, camaraderie, you know, hopefully that would help us towards the end. If it's yeah, anything I mean, like – go ahead. Go ahead. You got to let go everyone ahead, answer, Andrew. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I just I just think, uh, you know, um, everybody's familiar with each other. Everybody knows each other. Um, I think guys that played each other, you know, with each other, if it, you know, not in cues, just, you know, pick up in the summer or whatever it is. Um, but, I mean, we've been playing ball our whole life. You know what I mean? So, it, it is like riding a bike. You know, we're, we're going to be in shape. Um, that first game, you know, that first, you know, five minutes, you might, you know, you might feel it a little bit. But that's when that second win come in and kick in. And then it's, you know, it's just like riding a bike, You're, you know, getting up and down. And, um, you know, and, and once the guys start competing, you know, all that goes out the window. You know what I mean? Guys are trying to get that money. So, um, you know, we're definitely going to be ready. We're going to get to it for sure. If it really is just like riding a bike, then it sounds like Dante, Mr. 85 miles a week, you'll be ready to roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I mean, you know, we've, we've, our team has been in this since the first year. 
Um, me personally, I think this is my third year doing it. So we, we, I know for sure, you know, um, with Dave and, 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 uh, and Belby, you know, they, they, they put together a team where they kind of know what we need as far as winning. And, and, you know, I think our strategy this year is, is, is pretty good. And, um, man, we're just ready to cut them all hoop. Like, like D said, once that ball goes up, you're trying to, you're trying to go out there and win. You're trying to get that bad. So that's what it's all about. I got a follow-up question for you guys. When you talk about that first five minutes of the game, um, I was just an average college basketball player. That first five minutes was probably the hardest five minutes of the game. No, no doubt about it. That first war, you come back to the huddle and everyone's gassed. Does that get harder and harder as you get older, or is it easier and easier? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, right. See, I mean, for right. me, go ahead, Tay. Go ahead, Tay. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, for me, it's it's a it's a knowing, you know. It's basically the warm up, really. You know, as you get older, it's about the warm up. It's about the stretching. It's about the things you do before. That five minutes once you get out there. For me personally, as I get older, it's like, oh, it's not that bad. You know, when I was younger, it was, it was go 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 go. You was going hundred miles an hour, yeah. and then you right. come into the top, you come into the huddle like, oh man, like, did that was that just five minutes? But you know, I think as you get older, you kind of know you're definitely more experienced, and, and you're going out there and you're picking your spots, and it's like, oh, right, you know, maybe I don't have that. I'm not that warm this play. Let me let me hit somebody else and let let me get them going, or let me do this or do that. You know, you kind of get get smarter with it as you as you know. Yeah, I, I, that's exactly what Tay said. I think you, you just learn from experience. You know how to pick your spots. Um, obviously, you don't. You're not. You're not trying to turn it down, but um, you know where you can kind of take a break, so to speak. You know what I mean? Rather than you know, at this time I got to turn it up. So I mean, that's where that veteran savvy comes in. You know what I mean? You, you picking your spots. Um, um, you know what you got to do. You've been playing the game for you know so many years. So um, as you get older, you get smarter and you start to learn little. Um, I don't want to say shortcuts, but ways to kind of, you know, save your energy, um, you know, for this play to be able to, you know, have it for the long run. Yeah, and once you get that second win, I think the game seems a lot easier once you get the second win. But the first five minutes does feel kind of, I think in every sport or every person, whether young or old, the first five minutes is always going to be the most difficult time because once you get the second win, you know, that's when you're calm, your nerves is down, or like your heart rate. So now you're ready to hoop. But, you know, just like these guys were saying, you know, like we've been playing our whole lives. So once we get our second win, I think every I think everybody's going to be okay. Or maybe even once we hit our first shot, whoever hits the first shot, whatever the case may be, everybody's going to be like, all right. I'm just yeah. glad you guys – I'm just glad you guys all, you know, kind of agreed with me just because I still, like, play pickup in the first, like – 10 points of the pickup game, I'm huffing and puffing, but then I get my second win. So it's good to know that, uh, that I'm good, that, I'm, that I'll, it'll get easier as I get some, some veteran savvy, uh, like the veteran savvy that's in uh, Eric's beard, if you guys can't see that. So. Yeah, oh, my beard. My, now, you brought, you, you brought another guy in who got a great beard. My man, Tay, you always, been at, you always had a great hey, beard. Yeah, I, I had a great patch. I don't know where it went at. I didn't purposely <laughs> cut it out, so I don't know. I, I see mine right here. Color. Oh, yeah, I see you over there. Yeah. It's my, uh, mature, it's my maturity. Nick's still naked face over there, man. That's crazy. That's a little five to five still going on. <laughs> I mean, you guys, you guys mentioned uh, being old, and with all due respect, you guys are pretty damn old. I mean, you've been, you've been. Never, <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. I've never said, I've never said that. You guys are at least all ten years removed from playing at Syracuse. So, I mean, are you excited to play with some of those younger guys this year? Because I know Tyler's been on the team, but I think this is Malachi's first year. Are you excited to get those young legs on the court with you? I'm very excited. I think I think uh, you are as old as you feel, and I don't feel 36. I feel about 30. Um, like me and Eric was talking about earlier before Tay got on is, you know, I feel like being in shape is a lifestyle, and that's what we try to practice is just try to try to take care of your body even when you're not hooping or even when you're on vacation, I always find a, try to find a gym or run a treadmill or whatever the case may be. But, uh, you know, being in shape is it's a part of, a part of our, our DNA. So I'm excited. And I think, you know, we'll see who's in shape and who's old and who's young, but I think I can hold my own out there. 
No, for sure. I, I'm excited to get, you know, get with these young guys. I mean, just we got a good mixture of, uh, you know, young fellas and then some, you know, uh, veteran leadership guys who have played in the tournament know, know what it's like. Um, and, and it's good to have that mix because, we, you know, this tournament is a small ball tournament. It's, it's you know, you're not going to feed it down to the big guy and, and let him go to work. It's We getting up and down. You know, you see these bigs. Um, these guys are 6'8", 6'9", 6'10", but they're athletic. They're running the floor. They're picking and popping. They're, you know, they're able to shoot, play multiple positions. So, um, you know, I, I think our team, you know, we, we've covered all of that. You know what I mean? We Everybody, if you look at our team, everybody on our team can shoot. I don't care if you're six foot or 6'10". Everybody can shoot the three. Everybody can run the floor. You know, everybody can jump. Everybody can rebound. So, um, excited to get out there with those guys, man, and, and uh, you know, see what they can do. And, you know, hopefully we can put it all together. I mean, it really sounds like a prototypical NBA team with the one through five all being able to shoot. But speaking of professional basketball, you guys have played really all over and in different places. And you've all also played in TBT. How would you say that the TBT competition and game to day experience compares to your other professional experiences? I think this year it'll be it's more loaded as far as like uh, the talent is, of course, higher than that just because you have so many pros. But you know, there there are not a lot of teams in the field this year. You know, they they limited the teams because of you know Corona and everything. And, um, man, it's it's there's some 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 great talent out there. So I think this compared to everywhere else, like you'll have your slouch games if you you know if you're playing somewhere overseas. You have a couple of teams that just you know they're just not not that good. But I think in this, every team is going to be good, and every game is 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 going to be tough. You know, there's no, there's no cakewalk games. I know the first couple of years we played in it, like our first two games, I would say, were kind of like, all right, you know, we're going to come out here, we're going to play hard, we're, we're going to focus on this team and not look past them, but at the same time, in the back of your mind, you knew, like, right, this is this is going to be a win. But I think this year, I don't think it's like that. You know, from the from the first game, it's going to be, it's going to be tough, you know, and, and it's going to be, it's going to be a battle every night. Yeah. I think for me, it's, it's, it's kind of similar to playing a EuroLeague game or, or playing in Europe because a lot of guys who are going to be playing against us have played in Europe or are still playing in Europe. I think the only difference is going to be the scouting report. You know, obviously, like, we can't watch film or, or like, we may not know what the team is going to run, a play is going to run. As of, you know, competing and playing basketball, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a lot of people that we know that we play with or played against. That it's going to be similar to playing just like a regular game, you know, if you're across the Yeah, I mean, I mean, you got to look at all the, you know, the NBA talent, the former NBA talent. I mean, they got a team full of the best uh, players in the EuroLeague. You know what I mean? So um, you could take some of these teams from the TBT and if you give them a, you know, uh, a few months to practice and, and do all that and get their, you know, plays together and all that, I mean, they could go compete, you know, at a high level overseas in EuroLeague or, or they could, pe- could compete in the G League. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's how high level this tournament is. And um, like Tay was saying, this year is just a whole nother level with, um, you know, having to shorten the teams down to 24. Now it's, you know, every single game it's, it's going to be, oh, we might play a, a Ohio State alumni. Next game you might play a, a – a Clemson alumni or whatever it is, you know what I mean? So uh, you could take a lot of these teams and, and if you had that time to practice with these teams, uh, they'd go overseas and, and, and dominate some leagues. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't want to say dominate like the EuroLeague, but they'd be up there and, and competing, uh, you know, with those top teams. That's how, you know, deep the talent level is for sure. I want to take a step back real quick because um, when Andrew calls you guys old, that's that's no knock. And you guys know that, but the people listening – they might not know that because when <laughs> push comes to shove, um, the older teams do better in the TBT. And that doesn't mean um, old as in age, but veteran um, in terms of playing in the TBT and gaining that experience is, is almost more important than being the more talented or more skilled team. You know, you look at Carbon Screw, for example, you know, last year they're one of the first teams to play in the tournament and then they, you know, they end up winning it this year. Do you guys feel like it's, 
you know, it's your turn basically because you've, you've played um, and you know what to expect and you think that's an advantage for you guys? I mean, I think every team thinks it's their turn. You know, you know what I mean? That's, that's, you want to go in with that positive mindset, um, you know, knowing you could win. Um, but again, um, it's a high level tournament, man. You, and, and, you know, we keep talking about this year, every game is going to be, you got to be ready. You know what I mean? It's not going to be like the past years where you could kind of like Tay was talking about where you could, um, you know, maybe look past, not look past, but maybe uh, take it a little bit easier than you would, you know, the third and fourth games. But, um, man, we're just, we're just excited to get out there and play, man. I mean, like you said, we have the experience. We, we mix it with some, uh, with some young legs. So, um, we're looking forward to getting out there competing and, um, you know, hopefully get into the money. I think whoever wins it, it's all about obviously experience. Like you talked about experience and older guys usually win the tournament, but it also has to do with luck, timing, you know, teams clicking, you know, I think whatever team comes together the fastest towards the end, able to win the last five minutes of the games, I think those are the teams that's going to have a better chance of competing for championship. Um, you know, most older guys know when, uh, you know, put it in second gear, third gear, fourth gear. That's the advantages that guys like us have is that we've played tough, long games. And we, know how to, we know how to finish. I think for us is that we're going to, we, I think, I think our biggest challenge is going to be uh, the clicking part, you know, knowing you know, which piece is what piece, what role, who plays what role, and, and uh, hopefully, you know, we could get it as soon as we, uh, you know, step on the floor. You know, uh, whoever's on the floor is able to come in and and produce right on time because we're going to need people to be ready at all costs. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't take the old guy thing to, to heart. Uh, sure. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm old in, in years playing, you know, I'm, I've been a professional. This is going on my 13th year. I think B Nick is going on 14. He, he left a year before I got to the Q's. Um, Eric has played all over the world and, and, and has numerous leagues with, with plenty of experience, just from, not even from college, but outside of college too. And in his coaching, his coaching days too, which he's in right now. So, I mean, we just, we're an experienced group. We know what it takes to win. D playing in it just about every year. So, I mean, we, we have guys that know what it takes. Um, and, you know, we've, we've gotten close. I know I, I made it to the final four the one year. We lost to uh, overseas elite that year. So, you know, that it, it's stung in, in, in the back of my head. And, and I know with the rest of the guys who are on the team that are coming back. So it's just, you know, we got to go out there and just put it together. And like Dean said, it's like chemistry. Knowing when to insert this guy at a certain time and to take another guy out. And I think the good thing about this team is this year, I, I think we, we don't have a lot of egos. You know, at the end of the day, we all want to go out. We all want to win. Not saying that, not trying to knock any other the teams that we have that have had the past couple of years either. But, you know, this year we know, like, all right, look, it's whatever it takes. You know, if I got to go in, if I got to play just two minutes this game, all right, I'm going to go in and play the hardest two minutes. And I'm going to come out, I'm going to have a seat and, you know, sit there and, and hopefully my guys are backing me up and do what they're supposed to do and we'll get to work and we'll move on. But at the end of the day, it's all about winning. You know, it's when to go home. So you got to win to move on and win to get that bag. And, and you know, that's, what, that's everybody's focus right now. Yeah, and obviously in TBT, and I know you guys all know this as TBT veterans, you can't win in the TBT without getting to the Elam ending. So let's fast forward to some games. Elam ending, you guys need eight more points. Who's the go-to guy for Bayheim's Army in the Elam ending? Yeah, whoever. Uh, going. Well, Whoever's yeah, whoever. that's that's the beauty of, of, of this team. Like, yeah. if you look at the roster that we got, everybody started when they played at Syracuse. You know, we got four mm-hmm. first-round draft picks. D-Nick was drafted. So that's five NBA guys. Um, so pick your poison, for real. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like when we sub out, we're not we're not missing a beat. You know what I mean? Everybody's a threat on that floor. We talked about it earlier. I mean, one through five can shoot the ball. It doesn't matter. And, and this is how we're, we're talking to each other. If you get an open look, shoot it. You know what I mean? You're a threat out there. And, and I think that's it's hard to scout because uh, now it makes it easier for guys like myself 
um, in one-on-one -on -one situations to where, you know, if, when I get by, if you help off, if you help off, I'm kicking it and he's knocking it down. If you don't help off, then I'm going ahead and I'm finishing it. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, we pick your poison with us, man. Whoever, whoever's hot, whoever's open, um, you know, that's who we feeding it to. Agreed. I, and you can't talk about Syracuse basketball without talking about the zone. Um, mm -hmm. I know you guys have played the zone in the past. What's the plan this year? We can't tell you that right now. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we, hey, well, you think you think teams are going out there and practicing against the zone tomorrow? If you guys say, anything? man, you, you never, never know, man. You went to Ohio it's, State. It's a million dollars on the line. It's a million dollars on the line, man. <laughs> you went to yeah. Ohio State. We're gonna tell you what, what we gonna, what we're gonna do. Right. We we gonna play man. That's what we're gonna do. Right. All right. Uh, but All right. Uh, yeah. That's fine. No, that's fair. I I. I explained that I was a little bit biased. I mean, I'm human, you know, but I, my, my biggest problem is those Carmen's crew guys. I didn't play with any of them. Now we got a big 10 team, the big X team. They got five of my teammates on that team. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. So the odds of you running into one of those teams is pretty high. So you're right. Don't tell me anything. <laughs> so honestly, I think it, I think it all depends on, you know, how the game is going. I, I'm pretty sure coach black has a strategy and, whatever he sees out there on the floor, what the best solution is defensively, he's going to lead us and, you know, make sure that we're playing the right defense. So whether it's zone or man, whether it's pressing or, you know, zone press, I think we're going to be ready for anything. And, and look, man, we, all these guys on the team have played, you know, and, and we know we can, we can make the adjustment ourselves. You know, we'll be like black. Okay. We need to, we might need to make this adjustment. Like all these guys are pros and professionals. We, you know, we know how to make these adjustments, you know, in-game adjustments. And, um, you know, it's not like, you know, we're, we're uh, just putting together a team who, who just starting to play. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, we know how to make those in-game adjustments ourselves. You know what I mean? I could tap D and, you know, and, uh, ask him what you think and, you know, uh, we'll go from there. So, um, yeah, like D said, we're, you know, we're just kind of going to go with the flow of the game. If we need to make adjustments in-game, then we will. I got a uh... – I got a follow-up question, okay? Elam ending, you need one more bucket. If you guys were all back at Syracuse, who would Coach Bayheim be giving the ball to? Me. Between <laughs> D, D, D Nick. Between D and D Nick, depending on what year it was. Yeah. Yeah. What well, day? What you, what you gonna leave yourself out? Like you ain't average eighteen. I'm, I'm gonna go with Kurt. Hey man, look. I, I, but you guys are legends, man. I already know. I, I know what the deal is, man. I'm, I'm, I'm third option. I'll take that. <laughs> I, 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 leave, I, I like my chances in, in you, in you two guys' hands. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. Don't sell yourself short, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. How much? Uh, how much involvement, or really, how much you guys talk to? Coach Bayheim during the tournaments each year, if at all. Uh, I caught well. We talked to Coach last night, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. good guy. He's a good resource. He's always teaching. He's always trying to help us out. You know, give us and us you know information on basketball. Uh, and that's all we do is talk basketball. So it's always good to have a guy like him. You know, a Hall of Fame coach. You know, someone you can pick up the phone and you know have a conversation with. Yeah, that's – I mean, that's the biggest thing. Like, he's not a huge talker. But if you talk in basketball, then uh, you might think he's a whole other person. You know what I mean? Because he, 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 he got a lot to talk about because, he, you know, obviously he has a lot of experience. And then it's um, – you know, I mean, I, I just want to sit there and soak all that up. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a Hall of Fame coach. So, um, you know, to be able to talk to somebody like that on a regular basis and, and get that type of information is an advantage. You know what I mean? And, and he definitely has, uh, I mean, let's, I mean, his name is across our Jersey, you know what I mean? So he better have something to say, you, you know what I mean? Because if, he, he, he wants to, he wants us to win as much as we want to win. You know what I mean? You know, his name's across the Jersey. So he wants to, uh, he wants us to go out there and have a good showing, you know, for, uh, for the university. All right, I'll take the uh, I'll take the next question. <laughs> so he's waiting on Tay. He's waiting on Tay or what? Yeah, I thought he was gonna say something. You you got no, nothing to say about Coach? No, I'm not. I mean, <laughs> no, no. I mean, they they said it all. You know, 
<laughs> Coach is a famer, man. We call him the famer. I know I know my year when we was there, that, that's that's what me and Johnny called him, man, the famer. So uh, you know, that that name speaks for itself, man. Hall of Fame coach knows his knows the ins and outs of, of the game, any any aspect of the game. And uh, you know, he's always there just to just to lend lend a hand and information and, and to definitely guide us. So you know, on the last time we had a we had like a mini camp up at up at uh, Syracuse and the whole week he was there every day, you know, talking with us and, and, and giving us pointers and, and trying to help us out. So I mean, you can't ask for more for anymore. Yeah, I mean obviously something that uh can't happen at TBT is a uh, is a six overtime game. So <laughs> Devendorf, going back to that game that you were a part of, which I'm looking at it right now, and you played 61 minutes, <laughs> all right, against UConn in the six overtime game. Are you still tired from that game? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not tired anymore. That was almost 10 years ago, so I've recovered. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, we we actually went to overtime the next game versus West Virginia. So uh, we 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 played dang near. Uh, you know, three games it felt like in two days or something. So, um, but man, that was a heck of a game, man. Just, I mean, you look at the crew that we had. I mean, myself, Johnny Flynn, Paul Harris, uh, Andy Routens, you know, uh, Rick Jackson. The list goes on. Ao. So, uh, we had a crew, man, and it was. Uh, obviously, we didn't, you know, think it was going to turn out like that, but um, it was super special to be a part of for sure. I'm just glad we got the win because. You, you wouldn't have been asking me that question if we lost. And I, <laughs> I might have still, I might have still brought it up and, and give you a little shit for it then instead. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have answered it though. What, what was more tiring in that game, the first, the first five minutes or the last five minutes? Oh, definitely, it was definitely. Uh, you know what? If people ask me this, it wasn't physically like physically. We was we, we were good. Like we were. I mean, we're built for that. We could have played three games in a row, but it was mentally like draining. You know what I mean? Like, dang, like, okay, can we untie this thing real quick? And, and but, uh, you know, we had a good crew, man. We kept fighting and, uh, uh, you know, we pulled it out for sure. How, uh, how in tuned are you guys with Syracuse basketball every year? Are you still as into it now as you were maybe eight or nine years ago? Of course. What kind of question is that? <laughs> A question from a guy who didn't play in college. That's what kind of question is. It's a question. Oh, like, it's a question for you to answer so that the fans well, I, continue to love even more. Nah, man, me, it, it, sticks, it sticks with you. It okay. really does. Like, I know for me, I was overseas this year, and we had ended up getting a break, and I looked immediately at the Syracuse schedule to see what game I was going to be able to make, and I actually made it to the Syracuse Georgetown game this year, and. I know uh, I live like right outside DC. So myself, I live here. Um, Renzo Anawaku and um, Hakeem Ward. We all live in, in the DC area. So we talk about it. You know, summertime we all work out at the same gym. So we talk about it in the gym. How we gonna be this year? You know, how we looking? Of course, you got. You know, we got a bunch of Villanova guys down here. We have the Georgetown guys We're in their backyard, so they're down here and out here. So it's 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 a lot more. Uh, I feel like. I'm I'm into it more than I was before I even got to Syracuse because I committed early. But now nah, you you still you you have those rivalries, you still have those guys, you still have those bets, you know, on the side, especially you know those guys that have curved and make a nice little piece of change. So you know it's 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 a uh, we bleed orange, man. It, it it doesn't go away. I know for me. Whenever I'm overseas, even though there's like a seven hour, eight hour time difference, I'll make sure during the season I'll stay up to three or four o'clock in the morning just to watch the game because I want to know who's playing well and, you know, if we're going to win or not. So, you know, even though I'm across seas, I'm always on what's going on and, uh, you know, how well we're playing. Yeah. yeah Eric, I mean, you probably, you probably never ever do anything with Syracuse basketball at all, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, my you know, my experience might be a little bit different because I'm around all the time, you know what I mean? And, you know, I was, I was on coaching staff, but um, Syracuse is different, man. It's pretty unique because it's, it's, it's really like a family, you know what I mean? In, in the summer, we, have, we always have like a – it's a fantasy camp in the summer and you have all the old guys come back, Billy Owens, Derek Coleman, Sherman Douglas, 
uh, you know, D Nick and Tay, they both, I think you both guys came and did the fantasy camp one summer too. Uh, D Nick, mm-hmm. I think you did it multiple years, but um, if, if you, if you come in and, uh, you know, see something like that and see how everyone interacts, like it's, you might not, you might not have met this guy ever in your life. You know what I mean? But he played in 1970 or 1975. But when you meet him, it's like you knew that guy for, you know, 10 plus years. You know what I mean? It's, it's a unique situation up at Syracuse and, uh, you know, pretty grateful to be a part of that family. And yeah, like those guys say, I, I mean, I keep up with Q's. I'm every day. I'm in the gym with those guys every day. So, um, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm right there on campus with them for sure. So we've, we've discussed before guys that we haven't seen in the TBT yet or guys that we want to see in TBT. And Joey always says, you know, a couple years from now, someone he'd like to see is, is Carmelo, which I always think is pretty cool that he says that. So I'm curious because you guys have played and played with millions of different players. (laughs) That's not our question. That's not the question. Don't worry. Not the question. That's not the question. Don't worry. We're not done. (laughs) The question is, who is someone that you've played with that you either think would be perfect for TBT or that you wouldn't want to have to see against because you know they'd be giving you guys buckets? I would love to see Paul Harris play. Uh, he was one of my uh, you know, older guys that I you know, basically like took under my wing when I was here at Syracuse. And I would love to see him join us one of these years to compete for uh, the TBT championship. Um, I always enjoyed him. He was a true competitor. He always wanted to guard me in practice. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure he would be a good piece to compete for any type of championship. So I would say Paul Harris. Tay, who you think? Who you think, Tay? I mean, I always get to – I always get – I would love to see my guy Johnny come back. Um, oh, facts. That's know, a I, fact. I, I get asked this question. You know, we, we went to school together. We were McDonald's All Americans. Um, came in a freshman together. Uh, you know, and 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 I think he had a hell of a rookie year. Injury bug kind of got him, but uh, if 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 Johnny is 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 healthy and and out there doing his thing, I would love to to, to see Johnny go out there. I'm pretty sure a lot of other Syracuse fans would agree with me. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm going to go with Tay. And the thing is, if he didn't get hurt, we wouldn't even be talking about him playing because he'd still be in the NBA right now playing. Right. I mean, this right. that dude that dude was, uh, you know, one of the uh, special, like one of the, you know, biggest com- competitors I've ever been around. Like, uh, I mean, just being in the backcourt with that guy, I felt it was like the same because we both had the same mindset. Like, he was, he was trying to kill you out there. You know what I mean? And just put that together with the talent that he already had. Uh, athletic ability, I mean, IQ, like, he was out of this world, man. Like, it, he, he 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 really should be a, you know, 15-year NBA veteran w- with some all-star appearances. Like, that's how good he was, to be honest with you. And, and I mean, you know, Tay, you know, Tay just told you, like, it's not – I'm not even blowing smoke. Like, this dude was uh, – he's better than these dudes, like a lot of these guards in the league right now. Like, no question. So, I, I would have loved to, you know, lace him up again with him. And, and as far as somebody – uh, playing against it, I don't anybody. I'm ready for all that. You know, I, I want, I want, all that, I want all that smoke. So, <laughs> yeah, I had, had a feeling that 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 was going to be your answer to that one. But um, in terms of Johnny Flynn, I mean, you guys all agree the TBT was made for guys like Johnny Flynn to showcase, like they're the real deal, and everyone in his circle knows that. Um, but he's for some reason he's got to he doesn't you know he doesn't have to prove it to the world, but if he wants to. The TBT is the perfect stage for that. So, you know, I grew up, Johnny Flynn was like, he was my favorite player. I mean, I was a, I was a point guard. Like, it's the same kind of deal. You gravitate to guys that you just love to watch, you know? So, like, he's the prime example of that. And, I mean, selfishly, I'm agreeing with you guys. I would love to see him on on the Syracuse team. I mean, it just obviously, you guys know, take it to a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he. I think that injury is too much, though. You know what I mean? I don't even think he he playing ball anymore. Just to be honest. Yeah. No, totally. So some of the some of the Twitter questions that we got. Speaking of guys like Johnny Flynn, people that have played in TBT, et cetera, who who do you guys think is uh, possibly your biggest competition this year? Ourselves. Joe Johnson. 
That's the only. <laughs> he said Joe Johnson. <laughs> I was in the big take, league last year. Take, <laughs> take Joe Johnson. They put that in there. <laughs> Goodness yeah, gracious. He, he got this ourselves. I mean, it's. I think it's going to come down to us, how bad we want it. And uh, we're making the right decisions. Down shots. Um, you know, beating. You know, more. I, I think that's going to be good. It's, it's us. Go ahead, Tay. Finish what you were saying. No, nah, I don't need to say no more. <laughs> Big three last year. Joe Johnson, man. I agree with you, Nate. They're definitely ourselves. But uh, we're talking about another team or another player, man. I'm, I'm going for Joe Johnson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those, I mean, again, look at these dudes. You look at some of the talent that's coming out. I um, mean, you know, all these dudes are high, high level. You know what I mean? Either play NBA or, you know, high level overseas. But like D Nick said, um, you know, we got as much talent as anybody in the tournament. I mean, it, it, anybody. If you ask, if you ask me, I mean, you could ask anyone else. They'll probably tell you the same thing. You look at the guys that we have. You know, the eight guys that we have right now. We're gonna add another one. And it's gonna be a sharpshooter. I'm just letting you know. Okay, it's gonna be a sharpshooter. But uh, no, we we uh we got enough talent to definitely win it. So um, if we're clicking and everybody's on the same page, uh, they got to worry about us. No so, we, Joey, Joey is obviously he's got some allegiance to Carmen's crew and, and Big X as well. Um, for others like myself, who are kind of TBT free agents, I mean, TBT is going to be the basketball to watch this summer. Dante, I want to ask you this because I think you'll have a good answer. Tell, tell me and the rest of the TBT free agent fans why we should all be Bayheim's Army fans this summer. Um, one, I mean, you got the best college team in the nation, first of all. Uh, and you guys can go ahead and have one of the best fan base in the nation. Uh, you know, we are, we are a great university that is well-traveled, not just with the players and, and everybody, but our fans, you know, very, very loyal and, and dedicated. Yeah, I guarantee you if, if we was able to have fans in Columbus, we might, and we play Carmen's crew, we probably would outnumber them even in Ohio. So uh, you know that's 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 just just you know how how great our school is. But uh, I mean, you got the Hall of Fame coach, and and you got a great group of guys who just love to come out, and play hard, and and, and want to win. So you know, get with us. You guys full got anything to add to that? Well, full disclosure, I might have to cut that out because we don't know uh, if the Columbus announcement will be public. Oh, yet. my bad, that has been announced. <laughs> uh, but but oh, if it is, I'll, I'll cut out. I'll cut out just that part. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, you, you might as well just announce it right now. We've made that mistake already, anyway. So don't worry about That's it. That's okay. okay. Got you. No, I, I think the biggest thing, man. Like, if you like, if you really know all these guys, like, I don't, I don't hang out like that with people. Like, but when when we get together with these guys, like, man, so much, so much fun. Just laughs and and jokes and. It's a good two weeks, man, to, to get with these guys. Like, it's kind of like a, a breath of fresh air. You know what I mean? It's there's so, so many good people that you're being around. And especially now, right now, with all with all the negativity going around with everything happening, man, I'm, I'm so looking forward to to really getting with these dudes and kind of, you know, obviously we, go, we don't want to lay back, but it's going to be good to see these guys, man, because, you know, regardless of, you know, how much we talk and all that, whenever we get together, it's, it's love, you know what I mean. So, um, you know, you want to if you want to cheer for good people, Andrew, you are gonna cheer for us. That's you know. <laughs> That's a good point. I, I think I, I think I'm sold. I'm too. sold. <laughs> That's it. Well, we we thank you guys for coming on. This was a lot of fun. We're wishing you the best this summer. I think we agree with you guys. You have the best talent, and we agree with. Uh, Even Demetrius. I agree. Even I agree. And I, that's, that yeah. means a lot. You guys know that. And we yes, agree with Demetrius. Yeah. Your your yes. biggest enemy is yourself. Exactly. So I want to play on that. You know, I feel like everybody got, like you said, everybody has talent. Everybody, it's not going to be no slouch. So we don't want you guys to get up. All we want to do is play and just try to win as much games as we can. Never get too high, never get too low, baby. That's what I'm talking about. So, right. like Andrew said, we appreciate you guys coming on. We're You guys gained some fans in us, that's for sure. I don't know if I 
mean, I can't change my allegiance, but I'll be rooting for you guys. You know that. So we appreciate you guys coming on. Best of luck. Uh, go win that two mil, as long as it's not That's against it. Ohio State team. All right, Bob. Joey. Thanks, man. Good, man. Thanks, man. Joey, so we Go win, on, baby. If we have to win a, wear a Syracuse jersey or T-shirt, deal? Fine. Absolutely. Right, you too, Andrew. You, you, Andrew, you, too. Might be a, you, you might be a Northwestern fan or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I remember at the beginning, I'm, I'm a Missouri fan. I, I'm excited about ah, Marcus Desmond. Yeah. Well, that's mm-hmm. even worse. That's even worse. Sorry. <laughs> if, team, if Team Hines wins, if Team Hines wins, I'm expecting to see all you guys in Mizzou Marcus Denver <laughs> jerseys. I can't guarantee that. <laughs> all right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, guys.